How many of you have a Rubik's Cube sitting on your desk, staring at you, asking to be solved? I did. <laughs> and with 400 million Rubik's Cubes out there, chances are many of you also do. For me, there are two types of people in the world, those who can solve the cube and those who want to. I wanted to be a kid who could solve the cube, so I decided to learn how. I'm going to be honest with you, Lear learning how was really frustrating. At first, I thought I could solve the cube with a lot of trial and error. But that turned out to be a really bad idea. I could solve one side pretty easily, but when I tried to solve another, I'd mess up the one I solved. I spent a lot of time just trying to solve two sides. Eventually, I gave up, frustrated. And the cube returned to my desk, and it sat there, and it stared at me. Random trial and error not working is not at all that surprising. Mathematicians calculated that there are over 43 quintillion configurations of the cube, and only one is the solved cube. Just to put 43 quintillion in context, this is 43 with not 5, not 11, but 21 zeros after it. Or if you're more visual, if we lined up cubes with each one of the configurations, its length would be 200 billion times the diameter of Earth. But not long after abandoning the cube, I felt it calling to me to solve it. This time, I needed to do something different. I decided to hack the cube, literally by taking it apart. <laughs> I broke my Rubik's Cube into 26 pieces and put it back together solved. This was messy, but actually helped me a lot. I started to understand how the cube worked from the three different types of pieces, the corner, the edge, and the centerpiece. But it wasn't satisfying or cool to keep doing it this way. And sometimes, I couldn't put my cube back together. This created another problem of having to ask my parents to buy me new cubes. <laughs> I must have gone through at least three. OK, probably more like eight. I was frustrated, again. In school, when something was frustrating, there was a teacher around to offer ideas to help me work through it. But now, I had this puzzle. It was challenging, and my ideas were getting me nowhere. I had to be my own teacher. So I decided to do what most of us do when we want to figure something out. I Googled it. <laughs> Google took me to an online solver. I put in what my version of the cube looked like, and it showed me exactly what move to do to solve it. What was really crazy was that the online solver did it in less than 20 moves every time. There had to be a system. I searched more and found instructional videos and websites with different solvers. Many of these sites use a particular language based on the colors and positions of the pieces and a series of moves. The series of moves was called an algorithm. I didn't know what an algorithm was, but the word sure sounded impressive, so I assumed it would be helpful. <laughs> an algorithm can be a series of if-then statements. Algorithms are helpful in life, too. For example, they help me understand my parents. <laughs> you see, if your mom gets mad that your room is messy, then you should clean your room before asking her for something, like another cube. <laughs> Going to Google to get wisdom was a breakthrough for me. It helped me do my own research to find strategies that worked. Soon, I had the if-then statements memorized and could solve the cube without my computer. This is when things really got interesting. I started to create patterns to solve for, like just changing the center square or making a cross on each face. I was no longer looking for a single answer, but understood the ways to work the moves to get any answer I wanted. By working towards different objectives, I had reached a level of mastery. I played with my Rubik's Cube whenever I had free time. This is great for my cubing, but not so great for other things like piano, sports, homework, or chores. 
Learning how to solve the Rubik's Cube was a messy, hands-on process that involved lots of trial and error, literally hacking the cube to pieces, and finally, discovering the wisdom of others. When I started to make progress, the process became fun. At my best, I could solve the cube in about a minute. As I think about it now, I realize that I was learning how to turn my frustration into motivation to keep trying and to find new ways. I was learning how to learn. Thank you.